there was a woman named Virginia Satir, and she was a very famous family therapist. And she could sit down with you and talk about the stuff that was going on, and your problems would seem like they would just disappear. And she would help people understand that there are five ways that we learn to communicate when we're young. Five ways we learn to communicate when we're young, and four of them are dysfunctional. <laughs> Explains things, right? <laughs> so let's go through some of these. So the first dysfunctional way to communicate is what we call the placator, okay, or what I call the victim. So the placator goes like this. I want you to fold your hands together, and I want you to imagine that we're bending down on one knee, and I want you to hold your hands up like this, and I want you to repeat after me. I only live for you. It's all for you. I don't matter. So that's the placator. The placator is always getting caught up in everybody else's business. Always getting caught up in everybody else's drama and then goes home and watches more drama TV. And then texts a bunch of drama and then starts all over the next day. Because instead of dealing with what's going on in the inside and dealing with our own worries and fears and insecurities, it's easier to get caught up in everybody else's stuff. They also tend to be very passive aggressive. So they'll do something for you here and then remind you about it forever. Remember that meatloaf I made you last week? That was good, wasn't it? I know I had to go to the store in the rain. But as long as you're happy, okay? That's the one, can you get this to me? Sure, yeah, I'll get it to you. And in your head, you're going, screw you, bub. I'm not getting nothing. <laughs> this is going right to the shredder. <laughs> okay? We have a whole new kind of world with email now. I get brought into companies just specifically to do uh, programs on respectful emailing. Because people get bent out of shape with emailing back and forth. And of course, we can't actually get up and talk to each other. Oh! <laughs> we just have to send more emails and CC everybody else. So that's the placator. Placators are typically married to blamers, which is number two. Blamers go like this, point at somebody, not at me, and not at each other, but point somewhere, and I want you to repeat after me. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. It's all you. It's all you. <laughs> you pointed, I wasn't pointing at you. I was looking over there. I was pointing at that Coke. <laughs> But uh, do you see what happened? As soon as she thought I was pointing at her, she went right back at me. <laughs> oh, you're a blamer? Oh, I'll show you blamer. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It was a reaction. She didn't even think. She... There's a flag on the field. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. So blamers are always focused on what's going on out there because it can't possibly be what's happening in here because that would be too scary. And I was very much a blamer growing up because I was too fragile and too afraid of judgment and too afraid that my deep down fear of not being enough was going to be revealed or people were going to find out. I was terrified of it. So I tried to be significant in other ways. And it's weird. Today is September 11th, 9-11. My office manager... Her and her husband, she was married um, and, and in 2001, she was married, it was her second day of marriage. Her and her husband worked on an ambulance in Central Park at Ground Zero. Second day of her wearing her wedding ring. I find it amazing that now she's working with me. So we were hanging out last night as she was reliving how she lost 26 of her closest friends that day. So we spent an hour last night crying and sharing and changing and creating a vision of what we're going to do with that energy as she moves forward. Okay? So, but we start to tell ourselves the story of how we think things are and if we, get, we buy into our story. So the blamer is always focusing on there. But if you ever heard that old uh, adage that when you point out here, all the other fingers are pointing back at you? That is so true. Yep, yours too. I know. She's looking at her hand. No kidding. I never noticed that. I like you. No, it's funny. We got a lot in common. So, okay. So, anyway, so we go into, you know, the, the placator, the pity party. We go into the blamer. It's all you, okay. The third level of communication is what we call the distractor. And people are really good at that in the 21st century. That's, now, some of you who are cool call it multitasking, right? 
but it's distractor because you're trying to go in 50 different directions at the same time. So many of you are on an email drip. How many of you check your email like all day long? It's like an email drip. Oh, I better check. Oh, I better check. Oh, I better check. Okay. So that means that you're at the mercy of everyone else's agenda. You are not on your own. Keep that in mind. So the distractor is trying to go 20 different directions at once. Looks like this. Okay. Now you try. Go. Oh, you look so pretty. <laughs> okay. Some of you, that should feel very familiar. So that is the distractor. And they're so busy on purpose so that they don't have to deal with what's really going on. So they get busy over here and they get busy over here and they're plate spinners. Busy, 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 and then it starts to crash and then you build things up and then it crumbles and then you start on some new plan and then it doesn't work out and this is the year I'm going to lose weight and then it doesn't. And it's just all these things because we have been programmed to think that no matter how hard you try, it's just not going to work out. And then we tell ourselves that. That just doesn't work for me. I've tried everything. Everything? Everything. Really? <laughs> no. You've probably tried the things that you know harder. But you didn't try something different, so you didn't get a different result. The fourth level of communication is what we call the computer. And so the computer is kind of like this. Put your hands up like this and repeat after me. Just the facts. Just the facts. None of that touchy-feely crap. I am analytical. Okay. Now that will often come across as arrogant. So the other way of thinking of it, go ahead and do this. The way I assess the situation, because I'm obviously brilliant. Go on, you got to do it. <laughs> Doesn't work if you don't play. <laughs> okay. How we play games is how we play the game of life. So that is when we try to always think everything out instead of learn how to master our feelings. We go very left brain instead of getting into our more powerful, emotional, unconscious right brain, which is really what controls our decisions and behaviors. So we have that fourth level. And then we have the fifth level of communication, which is what we want to strive to. Now, we do all of these. The goal is that when you fall into it, you catch yourself. And then you shift. And that's all you have to do. How do you get out of it? Just have the desire to get out of it. Just have the intention to shift. One of the ways of doing that is to write a bunch of post-it notes and put it all over the place that asks you one question. What are you thinking about? Or what are you telling yourself? Or what's your outcome? I used to have one that had one word on it. Breathe. Because I'd forget to. Breathe. Everybody take a deep breath in. Good. Most of you, I heard the nose breathing. Because breathing through your mouth makes you hyperventilate. So I say, take a deep breath in, and people go, oh, I know, oh, there's going to be a panic attack. Because people aren't breathing, they get tight, they get stressed. So we want to get into the level five way of communication, which is called the leveler. So I want you to hold your hands out like this. And I want you to repeat after me. This is who I am. And I am enough. I have nothing to prove. I'm already good. And if you need some help, you say, this is what I need. And if you can help me, great. And if you can't, that's OK. Because I'll find another way. Good. All right. Now, I want you to pick one of those. Pick the blame. This side, do the, um, the placator, where you're like this. And this side of the room, do the blamer, where you're pointing over at them. And this side over here, you do the distractor. And that side over there, you guys do the, the um, computer. Okay? And we'll do it all together and, at once, and then everybody look at each other. Okay? Here we go. One, two, three, go. Yes. Good. Welcome to corporate America. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be that way. We can change our story. And if you're waiting for that to change, it will not. As I always giggle when I'm about to quote Michael Jackson, but if you want to change the world, start with the man or woman in the mirror. The world doesn't change out there, ladies and gentlemen. The world changes in here. 
If we want to change the world, we can. If we want to change your world, we can. But it starts by changing what's going on inside of you. And no matter how much awareness you might have, you can always have more and be more. Okay? So now I want you to go like this, the leveler, and I want you to smile, and I want you to make eye contact with someone from each group and smile at them. And just send them blessings, quiet blessings. Okay? Blessings, peace, sending you love. You look cute in those pants. Whatever. <laughs> okay? Now, how does that feel? It does feel great. And who caused that great feeling that you're feeling? Yes. And that is awareness. That we can create any feeling we want. We can cause it any moment we want. 